In this video, I'd like to talk about the differences between synchronous and ordered modeling. Ordered modeling is just like the history-based system that you use in SOLIDWORKS. In this case, my red part is synchronous and this gray part is ordered. Let's take a look at what that means. The Pathfinder is what Solid Edge calls the feature manager, and the Pathfinder will always tell you whether you're in ordered mode or synchronous mode. In this case, we're in ordered mode. And the features that have been created are all ordered features. They work exactly in the same way that features work in SOLIDWORKS. Let's now take a look at synchronous mode. Creating things in synchronous is very similar in ordered, but there are a couple of differences. First of all, we can see here in the Pathfinder that synchronous mode is active. There are also a number of features that have been created, but if we look at the sketches, the sketches are not associated with the features any longer. This is the sketch that was initially used to create this part, but after it was created, the part was adjusted and changed in size, so it is no longer connected to the original sketch. Because synchronous isn't driven by sketches, it's driven by dimensions. We can turn on all of the dimensions at once by going up here in the Pathfinder to click on PMI, and we have red and blue dimensions. The red dimensions are driving. These can only be changed directly by the user. The blue dimensions are driven dimensions, and they can be changed by other dimensions or directly by the user. So these are equivalent to black and gray dimensions in SOLIDWORKS. There are several ways to make changes in synchronous. First, you can select a face and then use the steering wheel to initiate a change. Once you start that change, you can key in a value in the dialog box that comes up and notice that the blue dimension is driven, so it's changing along with this drag. I can also key in 0.125. This allows me to change the width by that amount. Let's make another change. The steering wheel also allows you to change the angle of faces. And notice that this is changing symmetrically. That's because we've got this symmetric option turned on in the design intent box. If I turn this off, then only one side will change at a time. The design intent box changes depending on the context of what is selected. Let's take a step back from here and talk about starting new parts in either synchronous or ordered mode. When you create a new part, you select a template. I'll use ANSI inch, and notice that when this part opens up, it comes in automatically as a synchronous part. I can right-click on the synchronous entry in the Pathfinder and transition to ordered, and it goes over to ordered mode. You can create parts that are part synchronous and part ordered. The synchronous part always comes first, and the ordered part will come later. But if you want to make sure that your parts always start a certain way, go to the Application button, Settings, Options, helpers and here in the middle you have the option to start parts either synchronous or ordered mode so let's create a new part starting with synchronous i'll switch back now to synchronous from ordered go to the home tab draw a rectangle lock the sketch onto the front plane and then start my rectangle from the origin to extrude this shape, click inside the region created by the sketch and drag it out. Notice now I have dimensions on all three directions of my block. There are some really cool ways to manage your dimensions. If you click on this end of the dimension, that is the end that will change. Notice that the arrow here is highlighted, and if I scroll with the middle mouse button, that end changes. If, however, I had clicked on this side of the dimension, notice now that the arrow is over here, and if I and this arrow is highlighted, and if I scroll that, that will change. I can also set it so that they change symmetrically. I can also lock a dimension so that it can't be changed by other methods. And notice that the lock dimension is red. The unlocked dimensions are blue. There will be some situations where it becomes beneficial to mix modes. So you can have a model that starts out as synchronous and then transitions to ordered. 
So we've created a very simple model in synchronous mode, and now we want to add some ordered features. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to right-click on synchronous and say transition to order. The geometry I've already created remains in synchronous mode, but the rest of my modeling now is going to be in ordered. So I'll sketch and create features just as we do in ordered mode. I'll create the circle and give it dimensions with regard to existing model edges. And remember that these model edges were created in synchronous mode. So in order to create this extrusion, we have to get out of the sketch, select the extrude command, tell us we want to select from a sketch, accept the selection, give it a distance of one inch, tell it which side it needs to go to, and then finish and now I'm going to add a thin wall feature. Thin wall is solid edges answer to the shell command. So we'll give it a, uh, say, a 0.1 thickness. And open faces will be these three. Right click to accept. Okay, you see it's shelled out inside the circular protrusion. So it's shelled out both synchronous and ordered geometry. Now that we've added these features, I want to go back and make some changes. I'll go back to synchronous just by clicking on the synchronous entry, select on this face, move the steering wheel down to the bottom edge, and give it a bit of an angle. Just for exaggeration's sake, let's say 20 degrees, and then I'll switch back to ordered mode. So the ordered features have caught up with the synchronous features. This is mainly to demonstrate that synchronous features and ordered features work well together. And sometimes it's desirable to use an ordered feature instead of synchronous. For example, sketch-driven text is much easier to create and edit, especially in ordered mode.